Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. What a verse. That verse said that hell underneath us this morning is moved to meet you like it's just like it's just down there waiting just to swallow a person up when they die without God. I want to preach this morning on the subject six surprises waiting in hell. Six surprises. The word surprise means happening suddenly or unexpectedly without warning. Catching somebody unprepared or unexpected. There is no way in this world that I could stand here this morning and describe hell. There's nothing on earth to, do, to compare what hell is really like. No madman, Hollywood producer, in his wildest dreams could ever produce the likeness of its horror. Nobody in delirium can picture a place so utterly terrible. No nightmare raging through the uh, fevered mind of a madman could produce terror to match the mildest hell. No murder scene with splashed blood and oozing wounds could touch the borders of the land of hell. No gifted writer could describe the roaring caverns of the unending flames, the corners of the caves, the screams of those that were unprepared to meet God and have wound up in a place prepared for the devil and his angels. I know that there were people last night who took off in a car, got some booze, got some drugs, had a party, went over a hill, round a curb, hit somebody head on, and this morning they've already spent eight or twelve hours in hell. What a surprise. What a surprise, folks. A lot of times we wonder why we go to church and why we give money and why we want to build bigger buildings and why we run them buses. It's because every single human being on this planet is going to heaven or hell one when they die. There is a hell. I want to say uh, there are six surprises waiting on a person in hell this morning. The first one is some people will be surprised to find that hell exists. Can you imagine all your life Trying to tell yourself there's no such place as hell? Can you imagine learning all of a sudden, immediately, I witnessed by first-hand experience that it's real? They thought that it was just a state of mind for people on earth. They have told themselves for years there was no such place. But what a shock. Can you imagine all your life going to college, reading books, reading books by atheists, Reading books by Richard Dawson, people like modern day people that try to tell you the Bible's not true and there is no God. Can you imagine convincing yourself all your life, there's no such place as that. There's no such place as that. There ain't no hell. I'm like, these preachers, there'd be people laugh at me this morning for preaching what I'm preaching. That's old fashioned. That's out of style. We don't believe that way no more. Can you imagine breathing your life breath or hearing the doctor saying there's no hope? Breath goes out of your lungs. All of a sudden, you find yourself going down, down, like in a real fast elevator. And you smell something like sulfur. And you hear screams of people. You think it's a dream until that fire starts to hit your body or your soul that's in hell. And then you look around. There's going to be a lot of people surprised that hell even exists. I've talked to a lot of people, thousands, thousands of people since I've been preaching. I've been uh, around this country and parts of the world, and I've had a lot of people tell me, had a man tell me some time ago, he said, I believe that hell is a state of mind. He said, I believe if you're having it good here on earth, and your bills are paid, and you're healthy, 
and you're happy, then that's heaven. He said if you're having it rough, you're sick, you've lost your job, your family, and you're miserable, then that's hell. And I said, sir, that can't be true. He said, well, how do you know it can't be true? How do you know that hell isn't right here on earth? And I pointed, I said, because you can go right over at that water fountain and get a drink of water. That proves that this isn't hell. You can't get no water in hell. You can't get a drink. This, this world isn't hell, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm telling you, it's bad, but it's not hell. This world is a Sunday school picnic compared to the real hell. Some will see me surprised to find out that hell exists. They thought preachers made hell up just to scare people with. There are literally people all over this country who think that preachers made up hell to scare people into coming to church. Now, why would we want to do something like that? It's ridiculous. You say, for money? Do you honestly think they're doing this for money? You ought to try it sometime. Uh, listen, I mean, what, what retard would think something like that? I'm telling you, brother, we didn't make up. I wish there wasn't no such place as hell. It's so hard for me to stand up here and tell you that people are going to burn forever and ever and ever. I wish it wasn't even true. But my conscience is bound by the Word of God. And the Bible said there's a hell. The Bible, who's been here before me and you were ever got here, who's seen the birth of all books in the world and see the death of all the rest of them. The Bible, who's never been proved wrong one time, been taken to court and thrown out. The Bible, who predicts the future and gets it right. The Bible, who cuts no corners for nobody. That Bible, over 50-something times, warns us there is a place where people go when they die, and it's called hellfire. You say, yeah, this morning you say, are you one of them hellfire preachers? Absolutely. There ain't no other kind of preacher. And if a preacher don't preach on hellfire, he's not doing his calling, and he ought to be fired today. Amen. Amen. You say, well, I think a preacher ought to just preach on love. That's why I'm doing this, because I love you. That's why I'm warning you, because Jesus loved you enough to keep you out of hell. Listen, brother, this ain't no religious game we're playing here. This isn't just a denomination and we choose to be Baptists. We are Bible-believing Christians that believe you're going to hell if you don't trust Jesus as your Savior. Let me say this, too. This don't mean we're better than nobody else. We all deserve to be in hell. Every one of us. Uh, you say, boy, I've done stuff since before I got saved, I ought to be in hell for it. I'm going to tell you something. You've done stuff since you got saved, you ought to be in hell for it. And I have too. But I'm not going because of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God. Praise His holy name for the blood that saved us from hell. And I'm going to tell you something else. If the Lord never done nothing else for you, if He never blessed you, if He never answered your prayers, if He never helped you one through one trouble, and if He never was there to comfort you, if He never done one other thing except save your soul from hell, you ought to praise Him every day of your life that we're not going to hell when we die and leave this world. Some will be surprised that hell even exists. Can you imagine being a college professor, standing at the University of North Carolina, or South Carolina, or Michigan, or Texas, standing and telling those kids those religious dogmas? Can you imagine one being one of these producers of the History Channel that puts these things on there and said, Hell, the devil's domain, and saying it's just old medieval stuff that the Catholic Church used to scare people to get their money. Can you imagine telling the kids that all your life and then one day walking across the parking lot and their heart quits beating and you look up and that place is real? Can you imagine that? Some will be surprised. What a surprise, brother! And the devil will lie. I'm going to tell you something about the devil this morning. The devil don't play fair. He'll lead you along. He'll get you into a mess and then pull out and laugh at you. And he's laughing at people in hell this morning because they didn't even believe it exists. The devil's biggest trick he's got is to get you to believe he ain't even real. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. They'll be surprised to find that hell exists. Number two. Number two this morning. If you're not saved, you listen to me. If you are saved, Pray, pray while I'm preaching. Number two, some will be surprised that they are there. There's a lot of people who believe in hell, but they're going to be surprised 
What am I doing here? I shouldn't have come here to this place. I knew there was such a place, but I didn't think I was going. No, God. No, you must have made some kind of mistake. God, I wasn't supposed to be here. God, I went to church every Sunday. God, I was a good person. Don't you doubt it one bit. There's about 75 million people went to hell in the last few weeks that thought they was going to heaven. They're surprised that they're there. You talk about a surprise. You talk about a surprise. Man, go say, well, I go to church on Easter. I go to church on Christmas. I, I, I get to the good causes. I try to pay my bills. I treat people right. And then wake up in hell. You talk about a surprise. You better believe. Listen, there's, there's preachers that'll be surprised. They're in hell. There's Sunday school teachers that'll wake up in hell surprised. There's, there's deacons that'll be surprised. There's good, uh, city do-gooders and mayors and policemen and sheriffs and, 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 and people of, of stature that we admire and people of morals, leaders in our community that'll be surprised that they are there. They'll be surprised to find out their religion wouldn't prevent them from going. They thought their church membership would save them. I remember uh, uh, reading about a story Dr. John R. Rice told one time. And he said when he was a little boy, they was real poor. And he grew up in Texas. And he said they had a big, back then they'd have a big community tree. And everybody in the community, they'd come out and decorate one big Christmas tree. Because people were poor and didn't have nothing. And he said they'd decorate that big tree. And he said all the children in the community would go out there at Christmas and they'd all get a gift. And he said he went out there one time and he was just a little boy. And he said, somebody call that, call this name, hand out. Call this name, hand out. Call this name. And they never did call his name. And he said, I remember the feeling that I had. He said it was painful to stand there and think, I didn't get nothing. I'm, it hurts me. Nobody thought of me. I didn't get anything. And then he used that as an illustration. He said, can you imagine? Can you imagine dying? Can you imagine? That's a great white throne judgment. God opening the book. Lord, I'm waiting my name there. Is my name there? Is my name there? And your name's not there. I'm going to tell you something this morning. You listen to me, church folks. Are you listening to me, members, bus kids, everybody? Are you listening to me this morning? You'll be surprised. Some will be that they're there. They'll be surprised that moral people go to hell if they're not saved. They'll be surprised that they are there. I'm going to tell you something, brother. Jesus meant what He said when He said you must be born again. It matters not how good you are. It matters not how much you help out in the community. It makes no difference how straight and moral a person you are. Jesus said you must be born again. Some will be surprised that they are there. Number three, let me say this thirdly this morning. Some will be surprised at how fast they came to hell. They thought they're going to live a lot longer. Most people don't. Uh, most people don't plan on dying when they do. Somebody said one time. They said they that going to repent at the eleventh hour usually die at ten thirty. Everybody's got their mind made up. I've talked to hundreds of men. Uh, this listen. This part of the country. These the Bible Belt. The foothills of Western North Carolina are filled with men who grew up with a good Christian mama and married a good Christian woman and have been preached to their whole life and know it's true. And, know it. and if you went and sat and talked to them this morning, they'd say, you're right, you're right, I'm going to do that one of these days. I'm going to do that. They have every intention of being saved. As a matter of fact, everybody in this room, more than likely, has intentions that you know you're going to be right with God one day. If you didn't, I don't think you'd even be in church this morning. Everybody here and most people out in this community have the intentions, I'm going to get saved. I have 17, 18 year old boys say, I'm going to get saved. I've had 40 and 50 year old men say, I'm going to get saved. I've had 60 and 70 year old men say, I'm going to get saved. But a lot of people are surprised this morning at how fast they wound up in hell. You see, you can be alive one minute 
and gone the next. Your heart can quit just like that. You don't have one promise, not one promise, that your heart's going to beat one more minute. And you know what your problem is? You always think it's going to be somebody else. It's going to be somebody else. It's not going to be me. I'm not going to die. But just as easy as I can go over here and turn that light out, that God can flip the switch and your heart will quit beating. I'm telling you, there will be a lot of people surprised at how fast they came to hell. You've heard me tell it many, many times. I've, I've, I've heard of a young man. I've told, I don't know why the Lord would have me tell this again. But a young boy playing baseball. That young man was healthy as any young man in, in here, any young people. Wasn't about 14, 15 years old. That boy smacked that ball hard as he could. That thing went sailing out in there. He took off running toward first base. He was running hard as he could. He knew he at least had a double, so he headed toward second base. And he looked out there, and the golf ball went right through them legs by that guy. And the guy turned around and started chasing the ball. He headed toward third. And he took off toward third base like that. And when he got over here, they all had a third base umpire. And he said, go, go. And he hit third base. And boy, he took off running as hard as he could toward home. With everything he had, he was running just as hard as he could. The people were screaming up in the stands. And they said when his foot touched home plate, his heart exploded. From the excitement. 14, 15 years old, perfect health. And if that young man had said no to God and no to Jesus, he died without God, some will be surprised at how fast they go to hell. I heard of a man this week who came to hear me preach. He had been going to a big, dead, liberal church who never mentioned hell. They brought him to hear me preach. I believe it was Wednesday night. And they said, now this man needs God. I didn't even know he was there, really. To tell you the truth, until after the service they told me that. They said, he said, they said he liked it. They said he liked some of the things you said. But they said that man said, I just can't believe anybody could do anything bad enough to go to hell for. And I said, that's the wrong opposite. I, I don't understand people who say, Nobody's bad enough to go to heaven, but they all believe they're good enough to go, or bad enough to go to hell. They believe they're good enough to go to heaven. If God is too good to let a or let a sinner go to hell, then it's not fair to let a sinner go to heaven. You say it's not fair if people go to hell. It ain't fair for us to go to heaven neither. But we're going. Amen. I'm telling you. You say, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? i got to tell you, write a book on this. Why do so much good things happen to bad people? Yep. Like us. God, the very fact that God let you live, the very fact that God let His Son die and shed His blood, that was not a waste of time. That was not a waste of energy. Jesus walked up Calvary's hill and let Him put nail in His hand 2,000 years ago to keep you out of hell. Yes, God will let you go to hell if you say no to that cross. He said, I believe God's too good to let anybody go to hell. He's good enough to let His Son die to keep you out. I'm going to tell you something. If, if I set this building on fire, or you set this building on fire, it's my fault if I don't run out that door. God made a door out. God made a door. Jesus said, I'm the door. It's your fault if you don't go out. You say, well, it's not my fault I was born in sin. It's not my fault. No, it ain't. It's not your fault you was born a sinner, but it is your fault if you don't take God's remedy for it. That's right. It's not your fault you was born into this world, but it is your fault you won't take God's escape out of it. Some will be surprised how fast they come to hell. Number four, some will be surprised at who they find in hell. The presence of the wicked of all ages. Ancient figures they have heard of forever. Imagine the people of Noah's day seeing them in hell. Imagine Lot's family and Herod, King Herod. Imagine seeing Jezebel. Can you imagine being in a place where all these people are there forever and ever? The rich man who died without God in Luke chapter 16. Movie stars and athletes. Hitler, 
and, and, and dictators of days gone by. Alexander the Great. I mean, Charlemagne and, and all these people like that. And you know, all the, the murderers, uh, all the, the serial killers. And, all, and I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people are going to be surprised at who they see in hell. They'll see popes in hell. They'll see priests in hell. They'll see Baptists in hell. They'll see Methodists in hell. None of these labels will make you go to heaven when you die. You must be born again. And I'm going to tell you about me this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me, young people. I've not always been a preacher. I ain't much of one now, but I used to really, really not be one. And I'm telling you something. I've, I've, never, I've, I've never deserved God's heaven. I'm the least of His children. I failed Him every single day. But you know what? I'm not going to heaven because I preach every Sunday. I've been in church for three straight weeks. I've been preaching every night. I've been preaching for three straight weeks. I used to make 20-something days except for a couple of Saturdays. One Saturday night. I didn't preach twice night. And I stayed, I was supposed to uh, go to a wedding in South Carolina yesterday and do all kinds of Didn't even get to go. Wound up staying over at the new church, having a man uh, trying to put tile down. We was loaded out in the snow and, and everything else. Wound up staying there until 8 o'clock last night. And I didn't even get to do what I was planning on doing yesterday. I stayed over there all day. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to heaven because of that. I'm not going to heaven because I got on a tie. I'm going to heaven because one night as I was 18 years old, the Lord Himself dealt with my heart. And I felt Him speaking to me. And I went down to an altar. And I asked Him to forgive me and save my soul. And He wrote my name in heaven and made me a mansion and put reserved for Brother Danny Castle. And I've got a place in heaven. Hallelujah! And it's never going to go away. And I'm going to live with Jesus forever. And I'm glad. But I don't deserve that. You're going to wake up in hell and you're going to see Baptist and Methodist and Church of God and Pentecostal and people that went to church their whole life. You'll be surprised at who you find there. Relatives, acquaintances, next door, maybe a brother or a sister. Number five, some will be surprised at the torments that are waiting in hell. The Bible said there are flames there, blistering hot. You'll hear the door open. You'll hear the blackness of separation from God. I, I can't stand to hear a preacher get on TV and say, if you die without Christ, it's eternal separation from God. I can't stand to hear somebody say that. You know what a preacher means when he's saying that? He's trying to smooth it over. So that the people that do believe in hell will say, well, he believes in it. But the people that don't believe in hell will say, oh, well, he's not offensive. It's just somewhere out yonder away from God. A preacher's a crook that'll talk like that. Now, hell is eternal separation from God. But I'm going to tell you, just implying, implying that there's not fire there, and implying that there's no torment there, and implying that you don't suffer there is a, is a false lead, brother. And I, I even heard one say this. I even heard of preachers that believe this. They say, well, if you hate, if you hate, um, you know, classical music, and when you die, God's going to put you in a big room and play classical music forever and ever and ever. I mean, if, if you hate the smell of uh, bacon frying, God's going to put you in a room and you're going to smell it. And just whatever you hate here on earth, that's going to be your hell. Oh, you, I, I wish that's what all it was. I wish it was all it was. I mean, just put me in a big room full of... Slaw or salad dressing or something. I'm going to tell you something, brother. Listen, that's not what hell is. That's not what hell is. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm telling you, nobody likes fire. Fire is the worst punishment you can have. Burning is the worst pain a person can feel. I don't glory in that. I'm not glad of that. I love you this morning. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to say, come to Christ this morning. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come to Jesus and be saved. Some will be surprised at the torments waiting in hell. When you find out the fire is real, it's not, it's not, it is literal. It's not figurative. It's not symbolic. It don't just represent pain, brother. It's real fire. And it's real flames. And it's real smoke. And you feel it. And you burn forever. You need to get saved this morning. You'll be surprised at the torments waiting in hell. Nowadays, people have the idea... Death is all there is. Death is a dreaded monster here. It'd be a welcomed angel in hell. 
Number six, and I'm through this morning. Some will be surprised that God permits the torment to continue. That eternal punishment is eternal payment for eternal sin against an eternal God. What the Bible says is true. Let me tell you what the Bible says. When I was little, my mom, you know, you heard me say it a hundred times. My mom, my aunt, her sister, they had a, a trio. The, my aunt played the piano, Aunt Shirley, and they sang, Lord, 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 I want to go to heaven. Hell is an awful, awful place. And when I was that high, I remember going through the house, hearing them sing that, and I kept, I told myself, man, I don't want to go to hell. And then as I grew up, I started saying, is it, it really ain't forever. Surely not. That, that ain't right. That don't make, you just, you burn, you burn like a piece of paper, and in a few minutes it'll be over with. And then I tried to tell them, I remember thinking this. I remember thinking, maybe if, if you sin 15 years, God will let you just burn 15 years, and then you just go out of consciousness and you cease to exist and you, you don't know nothing or feel nothing. I remember telling myself, I remember in my mind reasoning, saying, it's forever. You going to burn forever and ever and ever? And something in me said, yeah, if you don't get saved, that's what's going to happen to you. And then in my mind I say, no, that ain't fair. That ain't right. That's not fair. Nobody deserves that. I'm not going to burn forever and ever. I mean, I'm trying to tell you what to do, God, or nothing, but surely, surely, I, I remember thinking that. Some will be surprised when they get to hell that the Bible was true and the torments continue. Let me tell you what the Bible says. You know, I'm not interested in what some professor said who's never been dead yet. I'm not interested in what some sinner said who's looking for excuse to get to live like he wants to and hopes the Bible ain't true. I'm here to preach the Bible to you. And I, that's what our thing is on our website. Bible preaching. That's the name of my radio program. Bible preaching. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Brother Danny ain't the best person in the world. I've made my mistakes. I'm going to tell you. But let me tell you one thing for sure. When you walk in these doors, you're going to get what this Bible says. Amen. And if it hair lips your grandma, you're still going to get it. And if you love the Bible, you'll like coming here. And if you don't, you won't. Because you're going to get it. I made up my mind by the grace of God that I'm going to tell them what this Bible said, brother. And when the truth stands, when the world's on fire, let God be true and every man a liar. And I'm going to tell you something this morning. This book said the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and ever. This book said they have no rest day nor night. That's what it said. It said the smoke of your torment. You burn forever. You burn forever. You burn forever. And never, ever, ever get out. What the Bible says is true. They'll be surprised to find out that it was true after all. After the joys of earth. After its song of mirth. After this empty name. After this weary frame. What then? I told them the other night, I go. The, I was at two or three different hospitals the other week, in one week visiting people. Baptist Hospital in Winston-Salem. Mission over in Asheville. Grace here in Morganton. At Caldwell. Four different hospitals in just a few days. And in room after room after room after room after room after room, there's just people laying in there and miserable. Tubes running down their nose. My heart monitors on them. And I was walking down through there one day and I thought, is this where, what all of us got to look forward to? And the answer is yes, absolutely. That's where every one of us are headed. You think you're going to get out of it? You ain't going to get out. If the Lord comes, you will. And other than that, we're all headed to the hospital bed. It's coming. I'd hate to think. I'd hate to think. That I struggled all my life. And tried to pay my bills. And never could get ahead. And I had to pay the IRS. And worked hard to raise my family. And then die and go somewhere a million times worse. I'd hate to think that. I'd hate to think that. You know what? You'd have been better off never to have ever been born. Don't you be too proud. Don't be too stubborn. Hell 
is an awful, awful place. Don't you be too proud this morning to come to this altar and get your sins forgiven, your heart right. The biggest, baddest man in here is going to fall down at the feet of God one of these days and beg Him to help him. You might as well do it now. The bravest, toughest atheist in the world. The day's going to come when they're going to beg God for mercy. But it'll be too late. Some will be surprised that the torments continue. A thousand years. A million years. Ten million years. A hundred billion years. A hundred billion trillion years. And then a million times that. 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 There's people in hell screaming right now that would give a million worlds like this to be sitting where you're sitting with your opportunity.